This video is going to talk about multimeters and how to use some of the most basic functions of them. Now, there are many, many different models of multimeters out there. Uh, they may have some different functions. Some of the more expensive ones have lots of functionality. And some of the most basic ones like this are more limited in what they do, but they still do the core functions, which we're most interested in today, which is measuring direct current volts, direct current amps, resistance, and continuity. Those are the four things that we're going to be working with today. Now, one thing I want to note is this is currently, this dial, which is how I select what I want to measure, is currently in the off position. If you have a model that runs on batteries and doesn't have um, an automatic shutoff, you need to make sure that you always start and end in the off function. You want to preserve that battery as long as you can. Uh, no point in wasting it. So always make sure you turn it off when you're done. The test leads that come with your multimeter are how we test different parts of the circuit. There's two ends to these. This is the probe end, which we're going to use to, to uh, touch the conductive surfaces of um, electrical components or circuits. And the other end is what plugs into our multimeter. Those are usually called like banana clips, essentially. They plug into these ports. Now, we have three ports, but some multimeters may have more. The way you start out is always take the black port and put it in the common port. You can see COM for common. This is essentially the ground port, which is represented by that symbol. So you can always start there. The real question is, where do you plug in your red probe? Well, it really depends on what you're going to measure. Uh, as you can see here, there are, there's text that you have to read to figure out what port you need to use for what measurement you want to take. This symbol, if you can see here, there's, there's V for volts, there's the ohm symbol, there's milliamps. So for most of the measurements, this is what I'm gonna wanna use. If I'm trying to measure direct current that's greater than the milliamp capacity of this port, then I have to bump it up to this port. But you do have to be careful because this is an unfused port. So if you were to be in the wrong setting and, and stick it in the wall port, you could um, blow circuitry in this thing. You could kind of damage this irreparably. So just one thing to be aware of. Always make sure of what you're measuring before you do it because you don't want to destroy your multimeter. All right, that said, for our volt measurements, we're going to plug into this port. And let's go ahead and start off with a, a basic measurement of volts. So I have this battery up here that's a 9-volt battery. Now, the question might be, well, I don't know which range to put this in. Well, why don't you try and find out? Uh, this is a fused port, so you are not going to damage anything by testing. Let's go to the, to the lowest setting here of 200 milliamps, and let's see what happens when I test this battery. So if I touch both ports on the battery, both terminal connections, what's it going to do? It's going to give me a 1. That's telling me that, the, um, that I am out of the range to measure this. So let's try the next one up. Am I in range or out of range? Again, I am out of range. Let's go to 20. 20 volts. Am I in range? Absolutely. I mean, if you think about um, the ranges, essentially what's happening here is this is telling me the maximum capacity of the ranges. So if I have a 9-volt battery and I'm measuring a 20-volt uh, maximum, that's probably the perfect um, setting to measure it on. So let's do that again. Perfect, 9.3 volts. That's probably actually a healthy 9-volt battery. Now, if I were to turn the range up here, what you're going to see is the decimal point move from here to here. And if I were to go to the next one, it would probably disappear. So what this range is doing is it changed it by a factor of 10 from 20 to 200. So it moved that decimal point. Now, if I go to 1,000, I lose the decimal point entirely and I read a very, very small number that's not very accurate. So for precision, we want to be in a range that gets us uh, closest, but not over that range. So measuring nine volts on a 20 um, volt setting will allow me to see as, with as much precision as possible in this multimeter. So that's how you measure direct current volts. If I were done, I would go ahead and turn it to the off position. We're not going to measure alternating current volts, but it is very useful for household current if you're not sure what a, a specific circuit is putting out. All right, let's go ahead and move over to amps. So amps represent the, the current flowing through a circuit. Now I'm going to double check the circuit works. 
and it absolutely does. I have my power source, I have my load, and I have a switch all connected by conductors. Now to measure direct current, what I have to do is actually make my multimeter as part of the circuit. So what I'm gonna do is put my test leads. Let's, uh, so I don't know how much power this circuit is gonna pull. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the highest setting and see if that does it. Nope, that overloads. Well, maybe it needs to be on the other side. Do a little exploration here. Is that functional? Well, it's not working because that light is not coming on. So clearly the maximum capacity for current for this port that I chose is lower than the amount of, of amperage that that bulb needs. So here's a place where I could go to the um, alternate port that has a higher capacity and I could test that. Oh, hey, look, that works. So I'm pulling basically a, a quarter amp according to this. And as you can see here, that decimal point moved. I just kind of wanted to see what it would do because this is a good time to explore. And this is how I can test current. I have to make my multimeter part of the circuit itself. And then I can simply take the reading, get as precise a setting as I can, and take the reading. So we've talked about volts, we've talked about amps, both in direct current. Now let's talk about resistance. So resistance is essentially um, how much the wire itself or the conductor or the, the part, the component, is resisting the flow of electrons. I have this, it's actually a spark plug wire. And one of the things about spark plug wire is they're very sensitive to ohms per foot or resistance. So this is about a 500, um, ohms per foot spark plug wire. So let's test it out and see if if that if we can confirm that. So I'm gonna to touch my probes to both sides of this and let's see what it says. Oh, actually, since I'm measuring resistance, I have to change to this board. If you don't see anything happen, you gotta do a little investigation. So I'm on the lowest setting and what it's telling me is I am out of range to read. So let's move up and see what happens. 400 and about 50, 448 ohms of resistance. And that is actually very accurate because this piece of spark plug wire is about 11 inches, 11 and a half inches. So that actually makes perfect sense for 500 ohms per foot. Now, if you think about that number of about 450, that is over the range of 200 ohms, but it's less than 2000 ohms. So this was actually the perfect range to read this. If I were to move up, it would still read, but it's gonna have much less precision. As you can see here, I lost a decimal point on my display. And if I go up, it's, I'm going to lose much of that precision. And if you think about it, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 is a lot different than reading 448 or whatever the reading exactly was. Oh, I lost my probe here. Let's get it back on. Oh, that's interesting. I'm reading something a little different now. Too much going on. Sometimes here the challenge is actually holding these things. All right, so since I'm uh, if I were all done, I would want to put it to the off position. But there's one more thing I want to talk about, which is continuity. Continuity is very useful because we can see if there is a minimal amount of resistance in a component or in a circuit or wire. And what that can do is it can tell us if there's a break, a uh, physical problem with a wire. Let's take the spark plug wire, for example. Maybe I'm working on a car and it seems like a cylinder is misfiring and I suspect there's a bad spark plug wire, but I'm not sure. But what I could do is go to the continuity measure and touch each side. What happens? Oh, there's too, maybe there's too much resistance in that wire. Let me test the switch. If I turn the switch to the on position and I test only the ends of the switch, 
it should, we know it's a good switch. So I should get that confirmation of, hey, this is a good circuit. There is good continuity in this circuit. If I were to turn the switch off, I would not get that continuity. I'm not gonna get anything here. The What the multimeter is telling me is, hey, between the two ends that you're testing, there is a break in that conductor, in that circuit, in that wire. So that is very useful when you're troubleshooting, especially. Maybe you have a wire like this that has terminal ends on it, and maybe I don't know if the terminal ends are working. Maybe I just created this and I wanna make sure that I have good connections. Well, I could test this wire to see if there's good continuity between those two ends, those two clips. And that audible tone confirms it. So this is why this feature can be really, really useful, especially when you're troubleshooting. If something's not working, you're trying to figure out why, continuity can be a really useful tool. Now I suspect that the resistance of this wire was greater than the set the uh, threshold for continuity, so that probably wasn't a great example. Uh, but hopefully with everything else we did here today, you learned quite a bit about how to use the very basic functions of the multimeter. So definitely go try it out, go test some batteries, um, go test some wires and circuits, nothing live with household current, but go test some direct current and uh, uh, try it out for yourself.